just want to try to chew through these counter narratives, these dually narratives that we're seeing, Jeff, uh, about the Mueller probe. Seems to me Trump's allies are cheering about McKay being fired. They're agreeing with the president that the Mueller probe never should have started. Uh, and yet I'm seeing a lot of concern uh, from uh, establishment types that the firing of Bob Mueller could be back on the table and that could be very dangerous for democracy. Yeah. Well, this is Groundhog Day. Why? Because for a year, we've been basically, or at least since uh, Comey was fired, we've been actually talking about the same thing. People alleging serious issues involving the Trump campaign and the Trump uh, presidential behavior. Yeah. And Trump's allies saying, whatever you hear from these sources is fake and is therefore not to be believed. I mean, I feel like you could play a tape of me for the last four times I've been on. <laughs> um, the, the fact that Barry McCaffrey the other day, retired four-star general, pretty much conservative, said this president is a serious threat to national security. Now, in other times, that would have been a shocker. But once again, you're getting this situation where the Trump supporters say, I don't care. We don't believe it. He's corrupt. He's deep state. And the last part of Groundhog Day is until and unless the people who control the Congress actually find that Trump has crossed a line that they will hold him accountable for, I don't believe any of this makes much difference. I want to jump on that last point because I think that's where it becomes the responsibility of journalists to start asking congressional Republicans what that tipping point is, where their red line is, when they're going to be willing to call Trump out. You know, up until this point, there has been this idea that, that they're not willing to do that because they have midterms coming up and Trump is very popular among their base. But as you have this chaos play out, both the turnover in the White House and the actual policy chaos that is that we are seeing, where you have the president on one day saying one thing about immigration reform coming out another day saying something different. 800,000 young people's lives thrown into chaos over that, whether you see the Dow dropping 200 points, uh, punitive tariffs. There are so many reasons that the American public can look at this presidency and say, is this chaos something that I am willing to reckon with in my own life? Mm -hmm. And the more that Americans begin to process that, I think the greater likelihood you see of Republicans being willing to question the president. Yeah, I think you look at the president's tweets, the new tweets from today about Mueller and about McCabe and the FBI. On the one hand, it's just tweets, right? It's just rage tweeting. He's just angry. On the other hand, he's the president of the United States taking out his anger on the law enforcement community. And I noticed what Jeff Zeleny, our, our colleague here at CNN, uh, said on Twitter a couple hours ago. Let's put it on screen. He said, hey, does President Trump know something that we don't? Coming down the pike that we don't know about. This morning's tweet storm, he said, attacking the investigators seems to be a sign of something brewing. But I think we have seen this kind of behavior almost from, from the beginning. In fact, before he was ever elected. I mean, in a sense, when you go back all the way back to the campaign when Trump was saying, if I lose, it's because it's rigged, you have an absolute consistent behavior. And what I think has so far worked for him is that for all of this behavior, once again, the people who have the power, only people who have the power to hold him to account for this are not doing it. I don't know how many times I've heard Speaker Ryan say about one Trump behavior, and, well, this is troubling. Yeah. I'm concerned. Right. But, but the argument that the president has been making since before he was the president, whatever you hear about me that is critical, by definition is false because these people are lying. What he did in his tweets this morning. About memos. This is about McCabe having memos just like Comey. Right. Trump said, can we call them fake memos? And by the way, just quickly, Lawfare, a very respectable uh, website, has said, you know, there might be reasons why. Uh, uh, the firing of this deputy director was justified. These were career officials who made that choice. Um, and so it's very important, I think, for us as journalists to, to try to separate what is just angry and false tweeting from issues that might be more serious. Journalists can also sit here and until we're blue in the face saying, this is troubling, this is concerning, this seems dangerous. Uh, and yet the real power lies with Republicans in Congress to be a check on the president. I think that's that's where this conversation comes back to is what are we hearing from those people in power, Alicia? Right. I mean, if you have a bifurcated media market where there are people who believe that there's real news and fake news, then you need an established messenger that they believe is a real messenger to come in and actually break through that dichotomy. Um, you know, today you had Senator Marco Rubio on this week with George Stephanopoulos asked about the Mueller probe, saying that he has faith that it will be carried out. Those are the types of questions questions that need to be continued to ask be asked and I think that you know we will see more of those questions in the next few weeks and Jeff Flake on State of the Union which comes up again in an hour saying I just hope Trump isn't laying the groundwork to fire Mueller because it just can't happen